Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike Bro, the Bro Show. And we're here to talk about toys. Toys? What are those again? Is that this time of year that we're talking about toys? Is that something important this time of year? No. No? No. no. Toys, this is the anti-toy time of year. Oh, okay. That's right. right. This is where kids don't get any toys whatsoever. No they toys. just get like a lump of coal and that's it, you know. Maybe a tangerine if they're lucky. <sighs> Oh, a tangerine. That actually sounds really good right about now. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, guys. We're here. This is the Christmas episode of Peg Warmers. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, of course. For me, it's not just H-O-H-O-H-O. It's H-E-A-U-X. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. I got to do it the Cajun way. Gotcha. It's, I'm a little, you know, spicy and whatnot. Got to do it. So we have an amazing display here on the table, <laughs> but we'll get into that as we get going. <laughs> Just For, a little bit. First up, let's talk about the news. Yes. And basically, the news item that we, we picked for this episode is Toys R Us is back, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. So uh, there's like 400 Macy's stores in the U.S. that has a pop-up Toys R Us store. I, not not a full-blown no. thing. Maybe, maybe some like cardboard cut out dump bins and things like that, little yeah. shelves. Kind of like how DVDs are sold on Black Friday. But all Christmas season long, that's what we're getting. There's a toy a- section with some Jeffrey Giraffe logos on it. Basically, they just branded their toy section because Macy's always has at least a small toy section, even if it's just a few stuffed animals. Now they've thrown in the branding essentially to make people, hey, you know what? We want you to come in and buy toys and say you got it from Toys R Us, right? Not just like the the typical Walmart and Target toys, but the Toys R Us right. section at Macy's. You know, I, I'm kind of torn on this. It's really cool to hear about Toys R Us back open in a in a store, any kind of store. But they've been doing these pop-ups for Toys R Us, F.A. Schwartz, even KB Toys for the last 15 years. Various stores, whether it be uh, Macy's or JCPenney or anything like that. And it just, it never felt right to me. It just doesn't feel right to me. Because a pop-up isn't the same as a real store. It's not. It, not- it, it, we already have the, like... Um, Games to go type stores that are right. essentially a pop up store, but they have the whole store. Right, exactly. Like Spirit of Halloween. And you can go to any GameStop now, and they're basically a toy store. They're not yeah. doing games so much anymore. They're doing more. Or a lot toys. of collectible stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you can go into even like an FYE or stores like that, and you have people who are knowledgeable about the toys, not just collectors like us, but there are kids' toys in there too, and all these places. Mm-hmm. Um, my recommendation, if you're sh- if you've been shopping for the holiday season or anything, and if you got a last minute few things to get, go to like a local toy store, like a locally owned family toy store. Go to your comic book shop. Mm-hmm. That's where you need to go because you're going to get knowledgeable people who want to get you the right toy for the right moment for the right time. Especially if you're trying to find something for a collector that you're friends with or in your family that maybe you're not as knowledgeable about their collection. Yes. It's a great idea for... Um, you know, your your son or daughter collects stuff, your boyfriend's cousin, whatever, you know, that you're <laughs> yes, looking for something exactly. for. Like it's a great way of like, hey, I know they're into Pac-Man, what do you have? I know they're into G.I. Joe, you know, what's, right. what's out there kind of thing. I know they love Thundercats and there are no toys I can find in store right now. Well, I guess you're gonna have to order online, sir. However, we have a comic book or something right. that they can get, you know, something along those lines. And that's the way it should be. You know, you go into a Macy's, you've got somebody who knows how to sell you a nice, great pair of pants, but pants don't fit toys. Well, unless you get Build a Bear for Elf, then. And to be, to be honest, that Toys R Us pop up is going to be predominantly preschool toys and right. like the classics like Barbies and a, a Hot Wheels track kind of thing. It's not going to it's not going to have the depth because of the space limitations. Exactly. They're going to they're going to target the high sales items. Exactly. Or they'll have something that's branded as a Macy's item too. For instance, I remember a couple of years ago, the Alf that's actually back here, he's wearing an FAO Schwartz jacket from a teddy bear that was being sold when FAO Schwartz had a pop-up in Macy's. Mm, okay. And it has Macy's on it and whatnot, too. So I pulled that off and put it on ALF. But it's branded for Macy's and FAO, not just FAO. Gotcha. So it's one of those interesting little tidbits like, hey, you know what? I I want something that's really just FAO. If you want FAO, you go to New York. There is a store that's open there. You know, If you want Toys R Us, you can go to Canada. (laughs) You can actually go to Canada still. Or Japan. You can go to a Toys R Us there. I think in Malaysia, too. I've seen Mm. pictures online of those. Um, But anywhere here in the States? not going to really get that experience unless, again, you go to a small shop. Uh, locally, we have a lot of different comic shops, a lot of different toy stores that you can go to. Right. Like I even worked at one for a few years back. So, yeah, I missed that one. That was fun. And if you ever need a good gift wrapper, call me up. I can gift wrap like an expert. Thank okay. you, F.A. Schwartz, for teaching me. 
All right, so the next segment is new to the collection. Yes. I'll go first. You go first. I brought I brought a uh, Funko Pop with me. I, we actually did an episode of on Funko Pops recently um, with a, a guy named Jordan, and we kind of talked about how Pops have, have gone from kind of pop culture things to just like just anything they can slap uh, uh, you know the pop yeah. form on like uh, we talked about them they, they did a Ouija one it's like how is, how is right it just is so bizarre but anyway oh I've been seeing like Rice Krispies and yes. candies and stuff and they just threw like legs and feet on and like okay they, but they, they, they just make a, a brand ambassador for themselves on top of that I would rather have like Snap Crackle and Pop that would make the Rice sense. Krispies box that makes you could sell that as a three pack individually, something like that. Mm-hmm. You could even include them as a, a like tiny little Funko Pops in the cereal. So here's the bet. Ooh, I actually i I got suckered and i <laughs> I bought three of these. I army built you a army Funko built pop. a pop. I don't know why. I got all excited. It was a 2021 <laughs> summer convention limited exclusive that just finally came in the mail, uh, and I army built it. Uh, he does sort of have the lenticular chest. I don't, I can't actually tell if it's lenticular or it's just meant to look that way. Right. It's a little, it's a little bit bizarre, but I, I do love how it looks like the toy. The, these yeah. retro toy, they really have like the details. It's it's amazing how the bodies almost look like a vintage G.I. Joe and right. just has a ridiculously big head yeah. on top of it. And you know what though? Honestly, with something like that, like the Cobra Bat, not the people, but that in particular, it's like a robot, you could throw that in with your regular collection and it would be something that you think Cobra Commander would actually build. You know? <laughs> Let's be honest. In the cartoon world, they would have done something like that. Giant robot. <laughs> Aim for the head, guys. It's something that Sergeant Slaughter can't punch off. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way it would be. So I love that. That, that is awesome. That was what, Walmart? Is uh, that right? Yeah, I think it was actually. I don't remember for sure. I think it was Walmart. Yeah, I know they had it on the Funko site when they like the convention stuff was selling, but I think in store it was like a Walmart exclusive. So yeah, one of my friends, uh, a guy named Tiger, he's a huge pop collector, and he kept on asking me to look for that. I'm like, I never saw it, dude. I'm sorry, I didn't miss it on the site. I've been trying to resist not army building the Horde Trooper from Mass oh, Universe. Yes. I have one, but every once in a while I, I run across one in the store and I'm like, eh, uh, I don't army, try not to army build pops. I don't What, think what if you necessary. see it on clearance though? Then I would totally grab it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd have to grab it. Yeah, you'd have to. That's but, really cool, dude. I mean, the bat's one of the coolest Joe's designs. The even. designs, and I love the whole 86 mm-hmm. year, so I well, thought he was pretty cool. I wonder if they would have done, or if they did, like different attachments for the one arm. That would be neat. I, they didn't. I mean, they might have been able to tool that up, right? Um, if they needed to do a variant of it, right? You know, well, maybe in another year or whatnot too. Maybe another it'll summer make a convention exclusive. Yeah, yeah. No, give them a flamethrower hand or something. Ooh, flamethrower with the attached piece, little, little flame burst. That'd they, be cool. they do attachments, so yeah. Hmm. I know a few pop stores. Yeah, I have to keep an eye open for that. So, I, I have not been able to find the other G.I. Joes from that era. The, the, the Scarlet, the Baroness, the... F.Y.E. Yeah, okay. F.Y.E. and where did I see them? Oh, uh, actually, I just saw Scarlet the other day at a comic book shop. The okay. one in our in local mall called King of Prussia Mall. I picked up the Baroness, I think. I f- actually found her the same time I found the Horde Trooper. Okay. But I haven't seen um, the Snake Eyes Scarlet and Storm Shadow ones yet. And I'm not like super actively hunting them right. i would like to own them but they're pops to me are total impulse buys it's rare <laughs> that i like like i did with the right. bat where i hunt it down but uh right. online well, if i see the F- if i see the scarlet again at fye i'll grab one for you all right that'd yeah be great no, no no problem well my added to the collection it's from one of my favorite cartoons we've actually talked about it on the show before i was so glad i actually saw it in store before i actually bought it online because i wanted to check the paint job and that is the gargoyles nice. goliath figure from NECA. This is one massive figure inside. Um, one of the really cool things is it stands really well, even with the odd feet on it. Mm, okay. But I think the really cool piece is, and I'm going to pull them out while I'm talking about them. The wingspan is amazing. Exactly. On the wingspan alone, mother of goodness. Like, there's one. Like, one wing is the size of your hand. That's enormous. That is huge. Wow. And they come in and out very easily because in another set that's going to come out, when they come out with Bronx, the dog 
uh, gargoyle. He's actually going to have wings that will wrap around Goliath. Oh, like the folded. Like the cloak. I thought that was really a cool design yes. thing that gargoyles, like, I I mean, maybe someone else has done that in fantasy. Yep. But the way that they would wrap their wings up as if they were capes was a cool Yeah. Just a cool feature. design. And they incorporated that a lot in the cartoon because then they didn't have to animate those wings. wings all the time. It also just makes sense for them interacting indoors. Like, you can't have giant wings flapping around exactly but for your initial release of goliath with this uh you know stance and everything and what apparently we're getting we're getting all the the uh, gargoyles they're doing a repaint of goliath already as theolog the okay. evil clone of goliath i'm okay with that but the next one releasing is demona mm, so be i'm cool. really looking and then it's going to be bronx after that we don't know eventually we're going to get um Hudson, which is also Ed Asner. Yeah. You know, rest in peace. I can't wait for that one. But I really want to see what they do with the Elisa figure when that comes out eventually. I wouldn't be shocked if they start doing like stone repaints of a lot of them. That's yeah. one of the ones for Goliath as well, as I think is coming out. I, I would imagine they'll do all of them that way at some point. Right. So he just snapped. It's basically a free figure for them. You know, right. they, they've already got it tooled. So that is, well, you know what? Wow. We'll, we'll fly him in here. Try not to take out the display. Whew. Yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. That just comes from, you know, not being able to snap them in on time here. There we are. There we are. Yeah. So, yeah. What, is he an eight-inch figure, probably? I'd say about eight, eight and a half and or I so. I mean, that wingspan, each one of his wings is probably eight inches. So it's, it's about it's, six to seven yeah, inches minimum. Big, so, that is huge. There. He's a great display for like your Halloween display or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's about when I picked him. No, no, I got him not even shortly ago. But yeah, it's just cool. The four fingers on the hand. You have interchangeable hands. He actually comes with a jalapeno. Okay. Because <laughs> that's one of the running jokes on the show. He didn't know what a jalapeno was. He tasted it and he loved it. And he's like, hmm, jalapeno. So, and it's, a vo you know, of course, voiced by David, uh, uh, Keith David. You know, I will make sure that I save you, Elisa, because... I am a gargoyle. It is what I do for my city, for my castle, for my home. You are my home. So there you go. <laughs> Great impersonation. <laughs> I, I love his voice. So I think we can actually get him to stand and he'll hang out for a little bit here. Just don't fall. There we go. Yeah. I remember. So I don't, I don't know whether, I don't remember the broadcast history of gargoyles as far as when it came out. I remember hearing about it and seeing like, Either there was a, a game that came with episodes packed in with it, or there was, like, mm -hmm. advertisements for VHS releases or something. Yes. I remember seeing, like, previews without having seen the show, and I felt like maybe I saw the show once it started in syndication after its first season or something like that. It was, like, 1996 when it came out, okay. and then the way they teased initially was an actual board game yes. with a VHS tape, and it was a two-and-a-half-hour premiere of the first five episodes That's stitched together. That's what I'm remembering. And it actually had extra scenes in it that weren't in the broadcast edition mm. of the show itself, which made it really cool. So if you had that VHS tape, you saw like a couple of extra scenes, nothing that you had to see and need for the story, but they were just cool, like interactions with kids in uh, medieval times or Goliath trying to jalapeno, like stuff like that. You didn't okay. have to have it, but it was just cool to see. Um and I have that actual tape cassette nice. at home somewhere with the board game and everything. Never played the board game, but I had that. And recently, they came out with the last season on DVD, which I didn't do for almost like seven, eight years after the first wow, season. Okay. And the first half of season two had come out, but they just waited so long. And of course, now you can go on Disney Plus and watch it all, which I did recently in I go back and watch it again and again. I just love the Shakespearean theme of it. I love the fact that they incorporated real history into the show, and it just worked really well. So when NECA announced they were making these figures, it was like a midnight announcement. I'm like, I happen to be, I'm like, wait, what? I was all in. No matter, I didn't care what, as long as it looked good in person, and here we are. Fully posable, looks great. It can hang out with your Turtles NECA figures yeah. very easily. I mean, it just looks phenomenal. So it looks real world from that cartoon. Yeah, it's it's got it, it's sort of like um, maybe Motu Classics, where it's it looks similar to the cartoon, but has like a little bit more definition exactly. to the sculpting and the shading. That's actually a great line that it could fit in with too. Is yeah. that the classics line itself? Oh, he would be look awesome like as a horde member or something yeah. like that. No, no, like not Batrix. horde. He'd he'd working out with you know with He Man. Well, using his actual character, but I mean, right. if you just wanted to like have a gargoyle in the background, gargoyle yeah, as part of the 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 series. Yeah. So yeah, no, he's a great figure. I love him. Very cool. So, I'm going to go to stone sleep now because there is sun outside. 
I will be back later. <laughs> I brought something for you too, Mike, for oh, new, no. new to the collection. This is a t-shirt that I wore in the 80s. Um, and it wasn't new to me because it says M Nop on the inside. A N O P P. But we, we had lots of secondhand hand me down kind of stuff when I was a kid. But I, I recently came across this and was like, Mike needs this. Oh no. It's a no problem outfit. Yes! No problem! <laughs> Elf, look, we got a shirt! Oh, I love it! Can I wear it now? No, you gotta wear the Santa suit right now. All right, I'll wear the Santa suit! Oh my God, I'm gonna put it on right now. No, I can't. It's not gonna fit me. It's gonna fit my hand. This is awesome. Thank you, dude. You're welcome. That is, that is awesome. original 80s right there. That is. Oh, it smells like the 80s. <laughs> you don't want to know what it smells like. Kevin, what'd you use this for? No. <laughs> that is great. This looks like it was used like in a... Uh, um, Maybe like a uh, uh, gym class or something because mm. they put their name in it like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Did they have a whole class where they taught kids how to be Alf? Hey, you know what? I'm going to be annoying to my parents to make sure I eat all the food and then blow up the kitchen like I do every other week. Ha! Yeah. Oh, God. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> put that there. All right. I love our, it. Our next segment is Peg Warmers. And this peg warmer, the, the the toy, the series, the whole line that I brought, it's not an individual toy, um, sat on the pegs a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually bought them as they were coming out, because I was interested in the line, and I know I'm kind of building up to it here, uh, but then they were on clearance, and I ended up buying a whole bunch to donate to Toys for Tots, because I thought they were decent toys, even though they didn't sell that well. They were great toys, if I think I know what they are. So I've got the 2011 Thundercats yes. basic figures. Panthro. Yep. With his robot looking arms. Yeah, because they did something in the show that was like horrendous to him. Mumra, who I thought was one of the better figures in the line yep. as far as like just looking cool. Yep. Chitara. Yes. Lion-O, Lord of the Thundercats. Thunder. 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 Thundercats. Oh. Oh. oh! I actually really liked that design for yeah. him. I thought he looked good. I loved in the cartoon, too, you actually had Larry Kenny as his father. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really cool little nod to him. And I got the Thunder Kittens here. Oh, I never saw the Thunder Kittens, actually, in store. They came with little skateboards <laughs> as their hoverboards. Right. So Wily Kitten, Wily Cat. One of my favorite things about them, and also ties into part of our theme, is that there was an episode where they had a magic bag that could hold anything. Yes. And the magic words was Rankin Bass. Yes. Which is the production company for the original Thundercats show. And for, yes. Well, we'll talk about later. Right. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, so I bought these. They have $3 um, Big Lot stickers yep. on them. I bought multiple, like, complete sets <sighs> at the time and just scrolled them away. I thought maybe the show would find its audience eventually right. and people would come back to the toys or or it would be more fondly remembered somehow. Uh, but I took a set. I had all the characters. I had more than this because I had Claudus. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there were any other basic figures. Oh, Tigra isn't in this yep. collection right here. Um, but I took all of them. I took a, a, a Thunder Tank and a Cat's Lair. And a local organization near where I live does um, Toys for Tots distribution. So the Marines give them a pile of toys right. and then they... They basically spread them all out, sort them out, like, into categories, and then, you know, a, a, a parent who, um, you know, is financially, right. um, you know, struggling or whatever, they'll come and, and they, they'll talk to these people and they'll give them, like, a meal for, for Christmas from one organization. And right. then they'll be like, you know, you know, what are your ages of your kids? What are they into? And, uh, you know, they'll, okay, your kids are into superheroes. Here's some superhero toys or whatever. Right. Um, and I was like, find... Uh, and I had a good relationship with this organization. I was like, find a couple brothers and just give them all of them together. Yep. Because that's one of the things with this line is fun to have, like, the guys have a, a magnetic action feature yep. that works with the tank and works with the base. And, and it's just, it's so much fun when you can have a whole world in one package. Exactly. And that's the right way to do it. You find these toys that didn't have that, that footing from a show that didn't take, you know, for whatever reason or whatnot. But somebody's going to love it. Somebody mm -hmm. out there is going to love it. And you give them fun toys and donate something that you know kids that do need that imagination play. They need that tactile play, not just sitting on a computer or whatnot, or that um, just 
interaction with their brother, with their sister, whomever. Because you could even get us to a brother and a sister even, and oh, they would sure. be able to, to play with it too. Uh, it's just an amazing toy line in general. It's sad that it never found its footing that way. I think the media really kind of crushed it though. The, the yeah. show got bounced around time slots so many times and it just couldn't find its footing. And then the toys didn't move fast enough right. to warrant a second season of the show. Which was really good. And it all, the show is linked to the toys and the toys are yep. linked to the show and they both have to succeed together. And it's rare these days that you don't get a show that's at least completed or at least a final episode or something that wraps everything up. This was a rare time in the light, you know, last 15 years so that that doesn't happen. And this show set up a bigger story in season one, which is a, a bold move. Yeah. It's nice when it pays off. Yep. Um, another series that's similar is uh, Pirates of Dark Water, where, yes. where the whole show is based on finding multiple MacGuffins. And, and they it's never set, did. And they never do. Yeah. So it, it's similar in Thundercats. I did like, though, that they, they changed the story up a little bit from the original. They didn't just rehash everything. Like they, right. They, they didn't do, like... Um, like Lionel stayed kind of a younger character. It wasn't yes. like now he's a kid in an adult body, and uh, you know Chitara had a different role, and like they just kind of tweaked everything a little bit, added some more almost young adult romance. Yeah, a little bit of it. that kind a of stuff bit too. And I think that's what made it so good. But also there was a twist. I don't want to say it, even though it's an old show. There was a twist in one particular character right. that no one saw coming like no one did and it was amazing and that was a figure we never got we never got right. that particular character um but we did get like some really great battles and you didn't see Lionel using his sword every single episode there was a build up to it like two or three episodes then he used it for mm-hmm. a particular power or whatnot it didn't give him flight which was always silly to me in the original cartoon for whatever reason he could fly with the sword and it was only when he really needed it <laughs> the the one thing i liked about this show a little bit also compared to the original was that it was it was meant to be serialized. Like yes. every episode built on the one before it, whereas the original Thundercats is very much a syndicated show. Yes. So after those first two episodes, it doesn't matter too much what order you see them. I and there's occasional callbacks. Yeah. But for the most part, it's very status quo. Status quo. There's like, like one five-parter where yeah. and I was like learning to be the Thundercat leader again. Right. And that's but it. But a lot of it is like Mumra has a plot. Yeah. He sees the sword and gets defeated. And, you know, and it just goes through that cycle, much like a lot of those 80s shows. And I I just kind of enjoy that in the 2000s version, kids' cartoon shows just became a slightly more mature. Yep. I think anime had a lot to do with that. Things like Pokemon and Sailor yep. Moon and stuff that became acceptable kids' shows that have a little bit more of that. That want to hook you for a story Main that you want to go for the next episode, then yeah. the next one. It was almost like the soap operas for kids. Mm-hmm. If you didn't watch the episode before, you might miss a little tidbit. You d- you could watch another episode without it, but you would be missing uh, a little something at least. Right. Yeah. No, I love that. It was it was a great show. I really wish we had gotten that second season because we teased, you know, like Vultureman stuff and things like that. Like, come on, yeah, come on. And they and they didn't really make toys of the key mutants, which was disappointing. Slythe got one, yeah, who was poorly distributed, and he was only with a vehicle. No, no, that was a regular lizard man. There oh. was a slide that had a weird barrel busting action feature. Oh, that's and right. He barely that's right. got circulated. Yeah. Oh, there, okay. But I liked that there was a generic lizard man yeah. with that one vehicle. That was kind of cool. But it, it just was kind of disappointing that the line stopped when it did because there's so many great Thundercats characters to right. they could have to put be in explored. There. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Our main segment today is Rankin Bass. Rudolph toys. Oh, God. So we did an episode about the Rankin Bass cartoon shows. Yes. Which were actually much later. They were an 80s thing. Thundercats, which ties into what we just talked about. Silverhawks and Tiger Sharks. But what Rankin Bass is way more famous for is the stop motion Christmas specials. 1966, 67 is when they started with them. And they they ran through till the early 80s. Um, They switched over at one point, did a few of them as traditional animation. But a lot of them were this Animagic mm-hmm. stop motion animation series that was done in Japan. Yes. They would write them here, and then these animators would create these puppets and create all the animation, which it was a very unique style. And it was so nostalgic because it was in that sweet spot for us as kids, I'm sure, too. It was every year on CBS mm-hmm. or ABC or whatever, one of these would air, whether it be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, whether it be Frosty the Snowman, which was traditional animation, or would it be... Uh, 
the year there was no Santa Claus or, you know. Santa Claus coming to town. Yeah, that, like all of those. And they had a particular style. You knew what you were watching. You knew how it was made. And it was simple writing, but effective writing. The one thing that always killed me <laughs> as a kid, though, is I really wish it had been a universe. Like one universe. Like, of... like Rudolph was always the same and Santa Claus was always the same. Right. they did, they had, to, they had multiple, like, origins of santa and i get it right if you need to make a whole bunch of christmas specials you're gonna have to rehash santa claus right. background but like even if it even if they did different ones i would have loved to have seen some of them yes reconnect to the rudolph one which is kind of the most classic and i think the only one that ever really kind of reconnected was rudolph's shiny new year yeah it was and that's a bizarre one the, for sure there's a vulture in there there's <laughs> a, a rudolph man with, a yeah. knight. it's it's so bizarre <laughs> there's no yukon cornelius no it's, Wh- rudolph's the only character that comes back yeah. really how can you not have yukon cornelius i'm sorry he's one of my favorite characters he is awesome <laughs> like there's he's so awesome i have two of him so <laughs> Yeah. So tell us about this line. Give us a little overview. Oh, gosh. Okay. So back in the day when I was working at FAO Schwartz in Boston in 1997 to 99, during that like two-year period, a company named Playing Mantis had the rights to make Rankin-Bass toys. And they did everything from the heat miser to the cold miser, like all of them together. Okay. But this particular line for Rudolph, they did this extensive line. And every year there was like a handful of things that would come out. The first year was actually the big abominable that you see here with his tree. So he can put the star on it. Matter of fact, maybe. Oh, there he goes. Da, 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 da. It acclaimed. Actually, yeah, exactly. It actually has like three <laughs> different settings. And what's great about this bumble is he has no teeth. Okay. Because it's the bumble decorating the tree. Right. The smaller one actually has his teeth. Nice. But it's just a great line. It, they tried to do everybody in there, including Rudolph, Daisy, uh, Santa. They didn't do a Mrs. Claus. They did uh, Rudolph's dad. They did Yukon Cornelius. They did Yukon Cornelius with the sled. And every year they would come out and I would get them and I had to have them. I, Of all the toy lines that you own, because we actually have very different collecting habits. Yes. Um, I, I think really our biggest overlap is modern G.I. Joe. That and maybe a little He-Man. And a little He-Man. But this is the thing that I'm the most jealous about in your collection. <laughs> like, I am obsessed with stop motion animation uh-huh. and especially the Rankin Bass specials. And so this toy line is like just so amazing. Every time I go to Mike's house in December, I'm like, ah, <laughs> oh, they're so cool. And I, I may have known they were coming out at the time, but I just, you know, was not at the point in my life where I could be collecting right. this kind of stuff, you know? Oh, well, I'm, I'm a huge Christmas fan. Like, this is my favorite time of year, and, and I have to tell the story while we're talking about this. I would always work in a toy store at Christmas Eve. If I can work in a toy store on Christmas Eve, even now, if I can find a toy store, sadly, no, not a real toy store anymore, but I would work there Christmas Eve for free because you always get the one kid whose parents or niece or, or uncle or nephew will bring them in and say, you can buy one toy. And they get this huge smile on their face. And that made it worth working all those days of Christmas or even just a one Christmas Eve or anything like that. Also, drunk uncles and aunts, they are a lot of fun too. <laughs> but Christmas to me is special because this is where a kid can be a kid, like truly be a kid. Whether it be Christmas that you celebrate or Hanukkah where you have eight days of presents or anything like that, you really get to be a kid at this point because you're opening a present that's meant just for you. You're opening a toy that's meant just for you. These Christmas specials to me were it's a real callback to my childhood. Mm -hmm. I will sit there and when Rudolph shows up on Christmas Eve on CBS, usually I'll try to watch it live. I don't want to watch a DVD or anything. I want to watch it live with commercials and whatnot because I know for a fact, I'm going to get this like little spark in my heart. I'm going to get this little Christmas spirit that grows and grows. And I'll actually have a little bit of a tear from time to time while watching these specials because they remind me of that, that time from, you know, two when I kind of remember things, like 10 or 11 when I was still all super magical to me, mm. and it's still magic. So having this particular set as my Christmas decoration that comes out every year, I have to have it. It, it just, I had to have it, and I had no money. I had no money to spend on this collection when I was, like, you know, 21, 22, 23. There was no money to spend for this, but I had to have it. I would give up lunches for three weeks to be able to buy all the stuff that was coming out. The... Uh, Santa set here that has all the reindeer, including the more mature Rudolph. That was, oh gosh, at the time, like 70, 80 bucks. Yeah. I lucked out. They didn't sell as well for whatever reason because they were such a big set. I got it for 30 bucks on clearance. Wow. Like, I, I'm not going to complain with that. Um, but the, this guy here, this set here with the tree and the uh, 
Uh, of Almost Snowman, I have to show. This is a callback to a previous episode. Uh, Mike and I talked about how we store our toys in an episode. Yes. So this is how I actually store all of these toys. So I actually can fit every one of these pieces in here. I just really throw them in. I'm not worried about if they're perfect or not or just graft up. That adds to the charm of them. They all fit in here. Matter of fact, you can tell that this was bought at FAO Schwartz because it still has the FAO Schwartz tag on it. $48 for this set. <laughs> I don't even want to know what it would sell for today if it was like a modern toy. And, oh, Memory Lane. This was a Memory Lane toy, memory not lane. playing Mantis. So this was after they made that switch. Yeah. So it's just great. And it does a holly jolly Christmas, and it does it like three different versions of it or something. Okay. So, but. Okay. Ye- years later, probably in the the l- late 2000s, like 2000 and. 10 maybe, I don't yep. know, 2008, 2009. I picked up some smaller ones. They're actually on the back shelf there. Yep. Um, they're, it's, I think, a different toy company, but those were like, um, you know, very inexpensive. I might have gotten those at Big Lots or maybe right. Toys R Us. I don't even remember. But I love those figures, uh, but the, the character selection was much smaller. Right. Now, what I did love, and I saw those, they were good, but they didn't have one thing. And I have to reach over to get them. Stay here, Al. So... Rudolph here, the mature one, and even the one you could get individually, if you tap the tail, that's awesome. The his nose is. lights up. I've actually had to replace these batteries like three times in twenty years. Like it's not often. They're little watch batteries, but and he's still posable and it still lights up. That's awesome. I I love that. And it looks like the show. Like the show, it's kind of dull and dead mm-hmm. when it's uh, when it's not on. But when it brung comes on, super you bright. Know, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. So, you know, here comes Santa. I have a problem. I can't see. I need your deformity to get me through the snow, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love this set. The fact that you have not only Santa with a sleigh, you could get Yukon when it first came out, but you also had Yukon with his dog sled team. Right. Like, that's amazing. And because I never wanted to lose all the pieces or anything, I still have, like, the original plastic that held in all the tools on his sled because I didn't want to lose all those. All the loose accessories. There's even, you know, King Moonstone came out. Which is pretty cool that they did. Yeah. You know, the, the Island of Misfit Toys stuff doesn't get as much um, love. mainstream love. And yep. it's definitely the the more bizarre portion of the the story. It's like, yeah. okay, we have the Rudolph story. We got to pad this out to make <laughs> it an hour. Uh, let's have him go to an island where there's a winged lion as yeah. king. Yeah. It's crazy, and a lot of oh, that one is individual. Some of the smaller pieces up in the front there were actually like little PVCs you could buy individually, like Jack in the Box. Um, but the two elephants, the woodland animals, and even Dolly, they were ones that came with other characters. I remember specifically Dolly came with uh, uh, the girlfriend there, Clarice. Or- Clarice, yeah, Clarice. And anyway, um, she came with him. The two. Actually, I believe the two elephants and uh, the woodland creatures were like a set themselves. Like okay. it was like on a figure card itself by itself. Uh, and then you had like the head elf who comes with uh, the painted uh, uh, wooden wagon that you know Hermie decides. I don't want to paint that. I want to be a dentist. Just no. A dentist. <laughs> a dentist. Who wants to be a dentist? I want to be a dentist. You know, because it just it sounds like fun. I want to do that. I don't want to make toys anymore. All right, take it from the top. <laughs> And then Hermie, of course, comes with not only uh, a drawing of something he's going to do, but he also comes with a uh, wrench to pull out teeth. Like, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Really? <laughs> like, well, he pulls the Bumble's teeth. And what's the best thing about Bumble's? They bounce. Bumble's bounce. Ha ha ha. You know, Unicorn Cornelius. I love that. And I love, the, again, the fact that this one didn't come with the teeth because he's the one decorating tree. And he's to scale with all the yes. other figures. They had to do this one, of course, just to get something in line. But when they came out with this, I'm like, sold have yeah, to have it i think that's one of the coolest things i mean there's there's definitely things that are out of scale like there's a small version of of the king of the misfit toys right. but then they made a bigger one they right. made a smaller bumble but then they made a bigger one like throughout the course of the line they they release things in kind of the right s- exactly size eventually. And, and like you said over the last few you know years after this particular line came out other ones came out like your smaller ones but it never had the breadth or the depth of this one in particular and i just i love it so this is this is one of my pride and joys. I will never, ever do anything with this collection other than keep it for it's Christmas. It's awesome. It, it is it. Now, talking about this, there is also another unique set on here as well that I brought in that is going to be another callback. The first episode that we taped together, we talked about my peg warmer. 
Ponda Baba. Mm -hmm. So over here, we'll see if we can get pictures for that for everybody to see, is a Ponda Baba set that my friend Fred from Joe Battle Lines made, custom set that took parts from the the, uh, Grinch Who Stole Christmas live action Jim Carrey movie, action figures, sled and everything, and made a reindeer sled set of Ponda Baba with Rudolph Ponda at the front and Cindy Lou Ponda, (laughs) Cindy Lou Who Ponda at the front there too. Like, I, I have a weird Christmas decoration style. It just doesn't get any weirder than mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yukon, how are you, sir? I'm good, but I need to go find me a bumble because I need to do some fun. I need to find some silver. <laughs> it's amazing to me that originally he was supposed to be looking for like a peppermint mine. Yeah. Which is why he licks the snow. Yeah. And then they sort of just kind of modified the story. I, there's a lot of weird changes to that. That mm-hmm. special over over the years, like one of the things, the ending where, where yes. Santa goes back and gets the misfit toys. People wrote in the first that, after the first airing, and that. they're like, "Why didn't he pick up the toys? He said he was going to do that. He right. was going to find them homes." So they actually went back and shot that ending bit. And if you notice, the the animation's a little bit like rougher in that. Yeah, like a little bit it was rushed. Quick. There's a lot of like <laughs> things just sort of like jump into the into the wagon and just sort of hover and float and fly and it's it's magical but it you can tell it's like uh yeah this is a quick pickup shot at the end and one of my personal favorites is the goldfish that they just drop without a parachute yeah like wait wait what well, huh? <laughs> he is not gonna make it you know that kid is gonna be sorely disappointed <laughs> when he finds unless the bowl bounces like a bumble <laughs> there were also stop motion animated like intros originally because it was sponsored by GE. Yes. And so there's these black and white um, like GE intro kind of things that feature some of the characters, some of the elves. Yeah, because um, Rudolph really needs to be able to, you know, work a stove or drive a car or well, anything like that. that light bulb. <laughs> Ooh, hey, you know, does, does he change it? What kind of light is that? You know, <laughs> is it 40 watt? Is it 60 watt? You know, would he use a, you know, environmentally friendly one now? <laughs> He's got an LED now. <laughs> little, does he have one of those the compact screeners? fluorescent ones for a little bit? <laughs> so one of my other favorite things, and it's not directly related to the toys, but the, the show itself, the movie, was that at some point in time, it was discovered that this family that had worked for, for I think, I guess NBC or CBS, NBC, um, had like the Rudolph yes. and the Santa in like terrible condition, but they owned some of the actual the puppets that were puppets. used in the show. I I know this story. Yeah. yeah, and like they they had them and they let the kids play with them and they they basically <laughs> just broke them because they weren't meant to be played with by kids. You know, they're right. meant to be stop motion animated and stuff wears out when you animate with it anyway. Like right. they make extras of stop motion puppets because the joints wear out, but right. then to have kids like bing, bing, posing bing, bing, them bing, and boom. stuff. And then, so there was a, like, there's this famous photo of like the Rudolph just kind of like being propped on like a bowl of nuts. It's like heads yeah. just land in bowl of nuts because the legs don't work anymore. Right. And like Santa's missing half his mustache and, uh, and somehow, like, this was discovered that, that this family had them, and those have been restored. Yes. But it's just amazing that, like, some of this stuff came back from Japan. Right. And then got out. It wasn't just, like, kept at a studio, you know? Right. Just a really neat story there I, that I, I've always thought was awesome. It's very similar to a lot of, like, the uh, the toys that you found out, like, Kenner for Star Wars and things yeah. like that. A lot of the designers and everything walked out with original toys or whatnot and didn't do anything with it. They just put it in their attic or whatnot yep. or let their kids play with it and not knowing, here's a prototype, you know, Bubba Fett, rocket-firing Bubba Fett. Now it's worth, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars or yeah. $100,000 or whatever. But my kid was bring, broke to spring. So here's poor Santa... I'm getting moved around and in weird place. Why am I putting against uh, Rudolph this way? No. Well, and that Santa probably never stood well because a lot of the stop motion oh. stuff, they literally anchor the feet to the floor yeah. as they, they move them around the sets because uh, typical with animation characters, they often have weird proportions like, right. like the Incredibles. I always use an example. Mr. Incredibles got this giant torso and really tiny and legs. <laughs> And well, that, these figures. That, and that makes it hard to get stuff to stand like this, you know? Do you, you don't want to know how many times Hermie and the head elf have fallen during my displays when you just tap a table or a shelf that they're on? They yeah. just tip on over. So they're always towards the front. So if they go forward, they don't take out the whole display. <laughs> and putting this together with the Rudolph, or the Rudolph and all the reindeer, 
that takes a good five, 10 minutes because they're all tangled up in their harness yeah. and everything. And one goes down, they all go down. Same thing with the pandas over there. It just, it's a domino effect. I love that Yukon's dogs are so tiny. <laughs> like, I mean, I always thought it was funny in the show, but it's yeah. like he has these little tiny, almost like puppies pulling his dog sled. It's not a big team of, of no. huskies. And it's not all the, yeah, it's not all the same dog. It's yeah. all different dogs, like a little dots in there, a poodle. Why would a poodle be out there? Um, a, a, looks like a Corgi, uh, Bernard, one Bernard. That's yeah. the one that's really doing all the work. Let's be honest. Somebody just thought that would be, you know, make a great aesthetic <laughs> for them. Oh my gosh. It was great. And then of course you had Burl Ives as the narrator. And that's one of my favorite figures. Cause he never falls down, but yeah. he just looks like a, a real snowman. Easy got a little yellowing now after all these mm. years but not enough and it's just enough to make it look real like yeah. i don't mind that at all um and he comes with a guitar he comes with his his uh, umbrella and he, you know he just feels like he could sing right on the shelf and it just it makes me happy it makes christmas feel right when these are out if your bumble ever really got discolored you could just dye him brown <laughs> and make him a grizzler figure <laughs> 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 i'll he, get you he man <laughs> <laughs> he's about the right size I love it. It's just so much fun. They're they're awesome because they really do bring back those memories like of mm -hmm. watching. And that, that was one of the things I think that made stop motion animation so magical to me as a kid was that it just looked like toys moving. Right. Which always made me then want toy versions of those things, which is why this line, because it looks just like the show, yes. it like it just grabs my imagination when I look at them. Like I can imagine Right posing them and moving them and making them animate even though you would lose your mind trying to balance some of these guys uh, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that oh my gosh i at one point did try to do a little something with the tiny rudolph here on a green screen to try and get him to fly like one of my old bro show christmas specials yeah. just no yeah just no and it wasn't necessarily the animation it was his legs are pre-posed in a way, so he this one here, you couldn't do that. But if you had, mm. like, the original, it was all wireframe and whatnot in yeah. there. But it looks like, just as is, it looks like the original Very much so. animation. Like, it is hands down. Uh, this, along with the Muppets Palisades toys, yes. I think are the bar. Like, the, they set the bar for the best-looking toys that re represent the original medium that they were in. Hands yeah, down. Yeah, they, like... Rudolph or those Muppets, you look at the sculpting and they, you almost think they're going to be fuzzy. Yeah. You know? Or it was like right from the show itself. You could yep. hold it up to the show while you're watching Oh, that is the exact same thing. You know, G.I. Joe, not quite the same. It's enough, right. but not quite. He-Man, kind of the same, but not. There's definitely a filmation style versus a mm -hmm. toy style. Um, Transformers even. Even with the new stuff that's out with like the Netflix series and all that, where it's right from the digital animation to the digital rendering to the digital makeup of the toy. It looks the same, but it doesn't have the right feel to it still. This looks like, because it was stop motion, right off the page. Yeah. You know, and the only other one that's even close to this, and I still don't think it's close, are Toy Story toys. Yeah. A lot of those are like right on model with what you see on screen, but they just, as magical as those four movies are and everything that they've done, it's not quite this. Because this was a hand-touched show. This was a hand-touched animation. These toys were hand-sculpted. There's no mm -hmm. digital rendering of these. And it it just feels right. That's the way it should be. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yep. Whew. I love it. I'm really happy that you brought these along. Now, did they do did they do a skinny Santa? You have two Santas there. Oh, One, no, no, the it's just figure? a regular Santa. Although, basically, one Santa came with a sleigh. One came by himself. Right. If you look at his neck, it is very skinny. Yeah. He's retained his neck skinniness. But, and his leg skinniness, I don't know how he did that, how mm -hmm. he was able to walk around with that. So the, the reason I asked is that the, the minifigures that I have, yeah. it is the skinny Santa. Or, well, he's not really the skinny Santa. He's he's the fat Santa, but he doesn't have his jacket on right. yet, which is the pink shirt, which makes me think of the skinny Santa. Right. So to, there, there definitely were more things they could have done. Exactly. Um, but you, you once you run out of Rudolphs, it gets hard to keep a line alive. Right, and there's only really three different Rudolphs that you can do. You can do like a baby Rudolph, one, one with the covering of the nose. nose, like this one here didn't have that, and they, they, they never made one that I know of. Uh, and then you have the more mature one that's up in the front with the more right. big you know, uh, antlers on him. So, And of course, you know me and deer. I love deer. So reindeer, just right. Just right. All right, Mike. Well, thanks for bringing these on the show. Not a problem. It is my pleasure. I love to show these off. Hopefully, we can get a couple close-up shots so everybody can see everything, too, because, yeah, it's it's one of the ones that 
I don't always say I'm proud of or I, I'm impressed by my own collection. This one, I actually impressed myself. And that's, and that's the, you know. It's a cool line. I try to be humble, but this one, yeah, no. This is a cool line. Very cool line. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging on the peg with us and Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Thundercats. Ho. Oh. Holla. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you celebrate, enjoy. And remember, hashtag just bro it. And do what Kevin does. Donate toys. Do what I do. Donate toys. Do something good. Hashtag just bro it and do a good deed a day. It's worth it, especially this time of year.